about the history of Bulgarian language, the Cyrillic alphabet and its antecedent, the glagolitic alphabet. You will learn also introductory phrases, as well as some cultural tips in Bulgarian language. I'm your host, Vanya Zaharieva Alexieva. Let's begin. Bulgarian language takes a prominent place in the chain into European languages and is the oldest Slavic language with written monuments. At the end of the seventh century, the settlement of the Slavs on the Balkan Peninsula was almost completed. At that time, the fate of the Eastern and Southern Slavic tribes were forever associated with another people, Bulgars, or also called Proto-Bulgarians, who led by Asparuch forced Byzantium after a series of battles to recognize in 681 the new state of Slavs and Bulgars, and also to conclude the peace treaty with them and pay them an annual tax. Another Bulgar leader, Kuber, with his group settled in Macedonia, and from there tried to conquer Solon. Until the end of the ninth century, most of the Slav tribes to the north and south of the Nub River were included within the Bulgarian state, which became an attractive center for Slavs because they consider Bulgars as their defenders and allies against the common enemy Byzantium. The early Bulgarian and Slavs in general literature is associated with the work of the brothers Cyril and Methodius direct incentive for the creation of the Slavic alphabet and the first Slavic books was the request of the Moravian prince Rostislav, made in 862 to the Byzantium emperor Michael III to send him a bishop and mentor to preach Christianity in understandable language. For this difficult educational mission, the Byzantium emperor chose the Solon brothers Cyril and Methodius, who had been already famous for their knowledge. They created the Glagolitic alphabet. Nowadays, it's also called the Old Bulgarian and translated in most important liturgical books from Greek to Slavo Bulgarian. Thus, it became a literature language that served as a basis for the formation of the other Slavic literature languages. Interesting facts about the Glagolitic alphabet is that each letter had a numerical value assigned to it based on their native alphabetic order, as you can see. Later, another alphabet, the Cyrillic alphabet, gradually replaced the Glagolitic. It is thought that Saint Clement of Ohrid, a disciple of Cyril and Methodius, was responsible for the script. The early Cyrillic script was based on the Greek uncial script with ligatures and extra letters from the Glagolitic and old church Slavonic scripts for sounds not used in the Greek. The presence of the common written language as such early time, preceding the formation of most other European nations, was a great unifying factor that gave strong impetus to the consolidation of the Bulgarian nation and the development of the Bulgarian national consciousness. In the following centuries, during periods of foreign occupation, the effort to preserve the Bulgarian language was the main factor counteracting the assimilatory policies of the occupying powers. In the 1870s, a version of the alphabet with 32 letters proposed by Marin Trinov became widely used. Today, 12 million speakers, mainly in Bulgaria, speak Bulgarian, but also in Ukraine, Macedonia, Serbia, Turkey, Greece, Romania, Canada, 
USA, Australia, Germany, and Spain. Bulgarian is mutually intelligible with Macedonian and fairly close related to Serbian, Croatian, Bosnian, and Slovenian. And now let's see the Cyrillic alphabet. As I'm talking, you can go to the website listed below, www.lifeworksheets.com slash UN 187500LU. And you can organize the letters accordingly. One other rule. In Bulgarian, all letters are pronounced, no silent letters. So here it is. Let's begin. Oh, one more thing. Don't worry about memorizing all the letters now. We'll work through them in the exercises. A. We write it A, but we pronounce it A as in a cat. P, we pronounce it as bug. And the B, it's actually V, v like in a vet. G, like in a good. It's a different way of writing it. D, like in a dog. E. That's one letter which is the same, like in best. Je, je. It's the same as in a treasure, treasure. Z, it's pronounced as in a zoo. And we write it like three. E, it looks like an, I know, but it's E like in machine. And e kratko, which is pronounced like yes, or like in a way. K, make. L, a different way of writing it. But this is L. O, L as in a call, or lend. M, or M in Bulgarian, men. N, that's not H, no, it's N, like normal. O, easy, order. P, yes, this one is P, like P, in a pet. R, we roll it a bit, not much. R, no, it's not P, it's R, like in a restaurant. S, like in a sound. T, like in top. And this one, it's U, like in tool. This is our F. Yes, a little strange. F. F as in food. And that's the similar to H. H, H which is like in a Scottish. Loch, loch. T, T and S, the sound is T, like fits, fits. And another one similar, Ch, but a bit stronger, Ch, like in a chip. And this one is Sh, like in shot. And the sh, but with a little tiny thing going down, it's sh plus t, so st, shtick. Then we have a uh, turn, a uh, a little stronger, a, uh, and something which makes it really, really soft, canyon, soft, canyon, so the end it's softer. Then the last two, you and ya. Yeah. You, a strange way of writing it, but it's easy to pronounce like in a youth. And ya, yeah, it's like in a yar. We'll practice them. Don't worry. Did you finish with the worksheet? Let's look at some greetings and some way to say thank you. Dobar den. This is like, hello. 
We can use dobar den, both with people who we know and people that we meet for the first time. It literally means good day. And we use it during the day. We compose the phrase with the adjective dobar, which means good. Dobar den. And den, which means day. But in this case, we put the stress on the first syllable. Dobar den. Dobresem. Dobresem. It means I'm fine. It's at the same root of the word. Dobre, it's an adverb, which means fine, well, or okay. And dobre sum, it's basically the answer of the question, how are you? So if we ask you, how are you? You can say, dobre sum. Blagodaria, it's like, thank you. Bla go da ria. Let's repeat. Blagodaria. And we mostly use it in a formal speech. But we can also use it in informal speech too. Another substitute is merci. Zdravei. Zdravejte. Zdrasti. This means literally be healthy. But also we use it for hello. So we have most natural way to say hello. It's zdrasti. If this is the person we know really well. Zdravei, it's a little more formal. And zdravejte, it's when we talk in a second person plural form, a bit more official. So, zdrasti, zdravej, zdravejte. Kak si, kak ste? It's a new phrase. How are you? Kak si? Kak ste? Kak si, it's for a single person. Kak ste, it's a polite way to ask someone how is he or she has been. But the verb, it's in the second person plural form. It is a very popular expression and people say kak ste not only as a learned phrase after greeting, but also to check the other people's condition, feelings, and so forth. And they expect an answer. Quite often, as we notice above, we can say, Dobresem, Dobresme, which means I'm fine, I'm okay. Still, when the partner in a conversation is not feeling well, other expressions we can replace Dobresem. We can say, Gorodol, which means so so. In this case, you can omit the verb. Gorodol. And here it's our cultural tip number one. Bulgarians like to greet each other on the street when they're close acquaintances or friends. It is a very typical thing to see in the countryside. People would stop by to talk to their friends and ask them how they feel or just to say politely hello and have a short conversation in which they usually use the expression kakste, kaksi. Another phrase we're going to use today is my name is kazvamse. Kazvamse. Kazvamse is the most typical way to introduce yourself. Formal one. We can reduce it to the simple version, the second version. Asam. Asam Vanya. It's time for the cultural tip number two. When in formal situation, Bulgarians usually introduce themselves with both given name and family name in that order. In business environment, we use the family name. If we know the person a little bit more, we can switch to the first or the given name. And one interesting ta fact about the given names. Bulgarian cherish personal names very much. And we have also celebration 
which we call a name day. So all people with the same given name celebrate in a particular day of the year. These dates are holidays corresponding to the Orthodox Christian Church calendar and match the name of different Christian saints. Здравей! Как си? Добре съм. Здравей! Как се казваш? Мария, а ти? Аз се казвам Вера. Здравей! Откъде си? Аз съм от България. А ти? От Китай. Здравей, Ана. Как си? Здравей, Сашо. Аз съм добре. А ти? Аз също. Довиждане. Довиждане. Всичко хубаво. Благодаря. And here it's our last cultural tip for the day. Cultural tip number three. If there is one thing you need to know when travel to Bulgaria, it's the head movement. When you say yes and when you say no. Because sometimes things do not mean what we think they mean. So here's the quirky difference from most cultures around the world. This means yes. Yes. And this shaking your head left to right means no, no, no. Isn't that weird? That's all for today.